blue, isn't it? Bound to be blue. Now, uh, what about that joke here? I'll tell you what I haven't said. I haven't mentioned anything about our fine drummer and bassist, and I just worked out a connection. There was a connection earlier that I thought of with myself. It's a bit tenuous, though. But, uh, my, my grandfather uh, was a drummer by, way back when, you know, sort of 40s, 50s, and 60s. And uh, he worked with Ted Heath. And before, he was the drummer before Jack Parnell. And he was friends with Jack Parnell and gave Jack the seat oh, when he yeah. left, when my granddad left the band. And then Jack Parnell took over and then he gave the seat to Ronnie Verrill. Yeah. <laughs> and Ronnie Verrill was born about four miles from where I live. And I heard him play when I was 14 years old in a local concert. And I heard him play and I turned around to my mum and I said, that's what I want to do in life. Because up till 14, I hadn't learned music, hadn't done anything, and I said, that's what I'd like to play. Oh, oh dear, sir. is it still going well? It's coming on. It's coming on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, so, Ronnie Vell was animal from the Muppets, and you know, and that, that connection between myself and Ronnie Vell, and then I found out that um, Pete uh, took over from Ronnie Verrill in the which band was it? Best yeah, Best of British Jazz. So that, that, but that connection, yeah. <laughs> he's also an actor, you know. Yeah, oh, I, know, I can't get away from them. Come on, he's also an actor. He, he did. Um, he, he was on Crack. No, um, sorry, uh, Crack and Nori. He did on, on, on Dave Channel. He was on. He was on that. Yeah, he's done other things we can't remember. I think that was the Crack. Um, <laughs> And then I just found that another connection between our drummer and bassist, um, uh, Selena Jones, the yeah. singer. Um, Pete was with uh, Ronnie Scott's last week, but uh, Jerome used to be her musical director. Oh! And also Jerome is an actor. Oh, oh, this gets worse, doesn't it? Oh dear, the theme for the night. It's almost like I planned the musicians, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, but anyway, Jerome Davies, he, 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 did a, he did a film, his biggest claim to fame was a film with Bob Hoskins and um, Helen Mirren, that was it, she was on it, yeah, and it was called Last Orders. Was it Last Orders? Yeah, didn't that have Michael Caine in it? Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> Dear, dear, I think it did, didn't it? Yeah, only you and I know that. <laughs> but we got some uh, fine uh, actors, I mean uh, musicians in the band, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but, I, may, uh, I may run out of time for my joke, so I might need... Oh, no. This is uh, too much rabbit. Too much rabbit. <laughs> Sounds like Chaz and Dave, doesn't it? Rabbit. 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 Oh. Anyway, anyway, no, don't get me on to Chaz and Dave. Uh, yeah, so uh, this album I was talking about has got a New York theme. This is the one that you can't buy. I'm not going to tell you about the ones I've got with me because no one will buy them anyway. So, uh, so I'll talk about something that I spent a lot of money producing and nobody will buy that one. But um, it's. It, it's, uh, it's called New York Connections, my new album, and um, obviously every tune is a connection to New York in some way. And this tune is called End of the Line, so there's a bit of a train theme going on in the album as well, and it's End of the Line. I always forget to say, every album I do is always my own originals. And I only do that because I'm tight, I don't want to pay the PRS license. <laughs> Of you to shout more. <laughs> 
but the powers that be the one that want to kick us out soon. So I think there's time. I think there's time for my joke. And, and that's about it. I think. Okay. Now I'll try and be as quick as I can. Um, I'll try and be as, as uh, quick as I can with the joke. Although if you rush it, it doesn't work. But there was a little village called Covent Garden. See what I did there? So it must be many moons ago, because at one point Covent Garden must have been a little village. And um, there was a, a village pub. Um, and a, 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 one day a rabbit came bouncing along, like he does. It was a giant rabbit, actually. Well, you know, quite big. And it could talk, so it was you know, quite clever, really. But anyway, the, the, the rabbit came bouncing along. And he bounced in the toad, he's a little bit nervous because he's not been in this pub before. And he looked through the door and he thought, oh, must be uh, something going on there, isn't he? A landlord and a chap over there and another chap there, just three people in the pub. Anyway, so he thinks, well, it should be fine, I might bounce up to the bar. And he said, um, barman says, well, how can I help? And he says, uh, could, could, um, do you think I could have, um, a pint of beer? And uh, cheese and tomato toasty, please. And the uh, and I said, yes, I said, I should be fine here. Yeah, I served it out there. And, and, off, and he finished off, and off he bounced. And landlord thought, well, it's a bit odd, but never mind, it's customer, you know. Uh, next night, there was half the village in the pub because the landlord had told them about this rabbit that comes bouncing in. And um, it was great for business for the landlord, you know. So the rabbit comes in the next night, and he looks and he thinks, a little bit nervous, so, you know, it's a bit busy tonight. And he says, oh, maybe it must be happy hour or something. Yeah. He, he said, no, I'm hungry, I'm going to go in. So he bounces up to the bar, up the bar, can I have a pint of bitter, please? And um, uh, a cheese and tomato toasted in the bar, and said, yeah, sure, here we go. Here he goes, bouncing off again. Anyway, this... Uh, Happens night after night, and uh, at the end of the week, the barman he can't believe it because there's so many people coming to the bar, pub, and he's you know, making so much money, and so he decides to get all the TV in. I mean, bearing in mind we're talking, it was thousands of years ago. It was a very clever, <laughs> very clever barman to get the TV and all the media in. But there we are. But uh, the the barman he goes and so all the TV there, and, he came in, and then he, the rabbit comes in, comes out and the bar. Oh, could I, um, he's very nervous by now, the rabbit, and, you know, but he said, could I have a, a cheese and tomato toast in a pint of bitter cheese? And the barman looks at him and says, a bit nervous, he said, well, I'm sorry, but we don't have any of that tonight. And the rabbit goes, oh, um, well, is there anything else I can have? He said, we can have a cheese and ham toasty. So the rabbit says, well, will I be okay? Will everything be, uh, you know, if I have a cheese and ham? And the barman says, yes, of course, you know, it's her hand in it, it gives him, mm. Rabbit goes bouncing off. So the, the 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 next night, over the next, uh, there was like international TV and you know just plastered everywhere waiting for this rabbit. End of the evening came, no rabbit, didn't show. This went on for the next two weeks, all waiting for this rabbit. And in the end, the the, the landlord was just you know sort of distraught by it and ridiculed and because they didn't believe him. And um, about a year later, same three people in the pub again, this ghostly figure of a white rabbit comes floating in. He comes up to the bar and he says, do you remember me? And the landlord says, yeah, of course I do. You made me so much money that week. Of course I remember you. He said, would you remember I had a cheese and tomato toasty? He said, yeah. He said, and then one night you gave me a cheese and ham toasty. He said, yeah. Now wait for it, this is a punchline, I can run, there is an exit. <laughs> and he said, he said, yes, he said, what happened? He said, well, you said nothing would happen to me. He said, yeah, he said, well, I died. He said, oh, I'm sorry about that. He said, what happened to you? He said, here we go, really, drum roll. <laughs> no, he's asleep. <laughs> I told you it was a long drop. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, He's heard it before, that's the trouble. <laughs> anyway, here it is, here it is. He said, well, actually, he said, I died of mixing me toasties.
Mr. Uh, Jerome Davis on bass. Jonathan <laughs> Ford on piano. And the quite extraordinary uh, Rome Kiersey Lawson on uh, piano.